When I started in this band, I was a kid. Everything about being a kid is hard. You know, life is kind of torture when you're a kid. And the band is the thing that saves you from that torture. So it becomes your cocoon, becomes the place where you grew up, it becomes the thing that helped you mold your identity. And in some ways, it's the thing that gave you your identity. That's Geddy Lee reflecting on the legendary rock band he's fronted for 40 years, Rush. The clip is from a new documentary premiering this week called Time Stand Still. It's a bittersweet chronicle of the Toronto Trio's 2015 tour, which they announced would be their last. But everything Getty was just talking about there, about how he found sanctuary and identity through music, well, it kind of applies just as much to the fans who've made Rush their religion. In the film, we meet people who've traveled from all over the world to see Rush in action one last time. And my next guest is one of them. But Jillian Mary... Marianovich is no ordinary superfan. She's the creative director of RushCon, the roving convention that unites the online community of Rush fans in real life for a weekend-long Rush love-in. Today, the show comes to Toronto for what could be the last time, because like the band it celebrates, RushCon is also retiring from the road. I spoke to Jillian earlier this week about the new Rush documentary, and how it feels to say goodbye to the thing you love the most. Jillian, uh, take me back to where this whole obsession begins for you. How did you first convert to Rushism? Well, I sort of hate this story, but I will be honest with you because, you you know, I'm honest with my Rush fan friends. Um, in high school, there was a boy I liked, and uh. he was a Rush fan. So I did everything I could to try to hang out with him. <laughs> including but not limited to following him to go see Roll the Bones in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on November 1st, 1991. So I walked into the concert, didn't know what to expect, didn't know the music, didn't know anything. And then I left just a changed person. Like my eyes were rolled back in my head, my hair was blown back. And I was just like, huh, so that that's that's who I am now. This is my new thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what was it? I mean, like, can you identify what it was about the band that transfixed you that way? Well, the music was so good. And it was just such in a time where everyone was into Green Day and Metallica. It was just like this this different level of sound and musicianship and uh, thought that went into the lyrics and the writing. And then the show was so this was kind of like a darker era for them, but they had so much visual stuff that you could relate to and watch. And it was just and the performance level of just the three dudes on stage was just remarkable. I had not understood what a real rock art performance was until that day. So now you're involved in this kind of collective of Rush fans. Mm -hmm. um, But this kind of came together before the Internet made it easy for fan bases to congregate. Yeah, totally. Way way before, you know, Facebook pages where everyone could could like the same page so you know what everyone was into. Mm -hmm. How did you guys find each other back then? (laughs) We had a message board that was for Rush fans. Like an alt.rush or something like that? No, it it was similar to that. It it had its own own URL. But... um, um, so this was I saw a posting for hey we're going to put together a group thing in Toronto who wants to come who wants to help and I was just like oh yeah that's those are my people and so I signed up to volunteer to help uh, organize the thing and it just sort of uh, took over from there you know hosting it and then eventually sort of running running the show towards the end but you it sounds like a for Rush fans, it's almost like there's this private part of your life and then there's your other life. Like you're like when you get home and you're on the computer and you have records on, you're a Rush fan. Mm-hmm. But then you kind of like, you know, you're Clark Kent. You go out into the day and, and, and you kind of live your normal lives. Like how how is this Rush fandom – uh, inform the kind of person you are out in the real world. No, I mean, that's perfectly accurate. I'm wearing a Rush shirt underneath my button-down <laughs> shirt right now. Um, it's funny. It's like it's like a, 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 a club, a secret club. Like, you see someone out of the corner of your eye who might be wearing a, having a Rush shirt, or, you know, you can hear them air drumming through their iPod. You give them a glance, and they give you the glance back, and you nod, and you're like, uh-huh, there's another one. Um... I've been out. I've been out to brunch with friends and 
rarely like a Rush fan will walk in wearing a Rush shirt and I have to stop the morning conversation and be like, sorry, guys, I have to go talk to a stranger <laughs> right now. It's just it's the code. It's the Rush code. And, and Rush is one of those few bands that that has its own convention. What exactly goes down at RushCon? Um, RushCon is awesome. We usually try to time it around a concert, but since the band is no longer touring, um, it's a little different now. But it's usually three days over a weekend, and we start with like sort of a, a welcome party, and we we mix everyone up to play games, and we have uh, RushCon Against Humanity, which is the card game Cards Against Humanity, but it's specifically about Rush, and so right. everyone plays that, and mm-hmm. that's crazy and perverse. And um, then the following two days, we have sort of like game show style games. We have guest speakers. We have a tour of their record label, Anthem, which is just like a a museum of of amazing Rush memorabilia that we all tour. And then we usually have maybe a tribute show, Mm -hmm. a Rush tribute show. And then... Yeah, so it's kind of all those things. Uh, we tour around Toronto to see all the all the landmarks that they've made famous, and um, it's amazing. People, it's really funny. My favorite argument is, huh, RushCon, that's too nerdy. I could never go to that, says the guy who's been tailgating at a Rush show for four hours, who's wear, <laughs> head-to-toe wearing Got Getty, Got Lurks, like, and then the guy who's following Rush on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, what have you, and then they're the ones saying, no way, RushCon's too nerdy, and it's just like, please. It is it is hanging out with friends that you didn't know you have, drinking beer and or Diet Coke, talking about Rush, listening to Rush albums. Like, what could be better? What What do the guys in Rush think of RushCon? Um, they kind of roll their eyes at it. Oh, and really? I, yeah, I mean, they've been very supportive, but they're a little, you know, they're super private guys. And as you can imagine, RushCon attracts... Um, a very engaged fan, as shall we say. So there's a lot of excitement and, uh, you know, heightened heightened feelings with, with fans that I think that the band would kind of want to be like, yeah, this might not be a, a wise scenario for us to participate in, which I totally get. <laughs> no, no, no pressure. Right. Right. Uh, I'm sure you're aware, though, they're like, there are... Certain stereotypes about Rush fans. Really? Uh, yeah. Th- oh, yeah. Hmm. Of course. Tell me. Tell me more about these Rush stereotypes. Well, let, let, let's listen to a <laughs> clip from this movie here. Okay. Sid and I have gotten pretty good at a couple of Rush songs. What do you mean, like fast-paced rock? No, like Rush, like the band Rush. I don't know them. The Holy Triumvirate. The... Wait, you don't know Rush? No. You tell you don't know Rush the no. band? No. Exit the Warrior. Today's Tom Sawyer. No. That's Paul Rudd trying to explain Rush to Rashida Jones in the movie I Love You, Man. It's all in good fun, but it kind of does perpetuate the idea that Rush is strictly a guy thing. I mean, mm-hmm. what, what, do you, what do you say to that comment? Um, it's 100% false. It's a, a, a total urban myth. I mean, yeah, for the most part, it's mostly dudes at the shows, but the women that are Rush fans are so much more... In 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 my experience, so much more into them than the than the the male fans. I mean, RushCon is run by all women. There's five of us that have been doing this for 16 years, and you know, I just don't think dudes could get done what we what we women fans do get done in order to create this convention. Can, can you give me a sense of the diversity of people you've met through RushCon? Um, Honestly, people, the entire planet. Like, I now have friends in Japan, Australia, Wales, um, South, or Argentina, um, that weird, mysterious place up north called Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just all over the planet because because of this band. I think you know, in Canada, there's a certain pride that's really emerging yeah. about Rush that maybe didn't exist when they first came out and now that kind of the generation that that grew up with them is is, is now in charge you know there's, there's there's a real sense of of pride about them but you know when you watch this documentary you know the big reason why rush has quit being on the road is that physical toll it's mm-hmm. taken on on Neil Peart um, or Neil Peart. Peart. Well, yeah, I mean, I always grew up thinking it was Peart, and all my friends were drummers, you know, and I still say Peart. Mm-hmm. But I was wrong; they were wrong. Well, they should be smacking you across the backside of the head for that. I think I should be smacking them because <laughs> Peart. I'm with you. Not Peart. not like Peart Plus. Right. No. Peart. Right. So, what, what was it like for you to see Neil Peart shown in such this this kind of vulnerable? mortal light in this film it was great because neil keeps himself at such a distance um physically and sort of you know cerebrally from the fans just to give himself his own his own safe space i mean he writes such wonderful books but we've never really seen him talk about the 
you know, immortality of himself or the band. So hearing him talk about the pain he goes through and how difficult it is for him, we we never think that. We see him as this perfect octopus that sits behind those drums and just bangs away and it, he makes it look effortless. So to hear him say how much he really struggles but that he did want to do it this one last tour, it's so wonderful and heartwarming but really awakening as well to realize like this is a human being what i what i couldn't get over is i got to i got to actually spend some time with alex lifeson one time um maybe about a half hour we sat backstage and chatted for a while Mm -hmm. and i guess i was really surprised by how funny he was yeah he's ridiculous you know and how funny the band is and and how much he says humor has to do with how long this band has stayed together. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 yeah, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Like that Rush seemed like this kind of heavy um, band with a lot of time changes, uh, a lot of very serious musicianship, but but there, there's a lightness, there's a levity to Rush as well. Because I think they, you know, they went through so much in the early days to fight for their identity and to fight for the purity of what they wanted to achieve. And I think because of that, you just can't take yourself so seriously. And, you know, they gained sort of maybe some some hindsight to it to be like, wow, we really went through a lot there and we were successful and it did work. And now we can sort of laugh at the process. We can laugh at the fact that we wore kimonos and had camel toe and had ridiculous haircuts like who (laughs) what crazy kids we used to be. And now here we are. And, you know, they are such good friends and such warm, compassionate, you know, loyal people to each other and and their families. And I just think the humor and the way that they relate to each other probably kept them sane. And and I want to get a little bit serious, though, because in the film, we kind of hear your rallying cry for the RushCon crew, that final show last year in Los Angeles. Um, And I'm going to play a clip of you sharing your thoughts going into the show. So meta. So meta. Take take a listen to this. It's just going to feel like there's a whole um, lack of, like, progression in my life, you know, to have this thing stop that I used to look forward to so much. This is so important to me and has been such a part of who I've been for so long (laughs) that, you know, closing this chapter is going to be sad but good. (laughs) Jillian. What um, a sap. Well, no, I mean... You're the creative director of of RushCon, and I know it's 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 funny, and 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 there's there's a lot of joy in there. But um, you say something interesting there. You say that seeing Rush for the last time will be sad but good. And yeah. I think when you listen to this, you can obviously understand the sad part. But but what part of that final show? What part of that experience has been good? Because they went out on top. They went out as just the gods that they are. They did not have to replace a band member they did not have to start touring at state fairs or casinos they ended it that the the way they wanted to with dignity and and just leaving just this epic 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 legacy and you have to respect that What's the what's the future of Rushcon going to be if the band's still not touring? No future. I think really? this yeah, this might be our last one. I mean, it's so hard to put together and it 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 takes so much. I mean, we all have full-time jobs times a million and you know, we we don't make we lose money. It's it's so much fun and it's so rewarding, but it's just like I don't know, without the band touring anymore, we're not we're just not sure we can get get the draw as as much as we used to. I mean that must be a different kind of a different kind of sadness as well. Yeah, I mean to be I mean we're all going through a lot of changes in our life over the next couple of months and I think, you know, Rush will never go away. Rush will never be gone from any of our lives. So, you know, people shouldn't be approaching it in the way that like, oh gosh, I have to give up on this this amazing thing. It's like, no 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 no, you have it even closer now. You you will always have Walking home from work in the dark with your earphones on, listening to Xanadu. Like no one's taking that away from you. You've 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 been on the journey with them. They took you along in this journey. They decided when it was going to end, and now we can cherish that. But we still will always have the music. You mentioned that you all have full time jobs. 
And I, I kind of want to mention yours. Yeah. Because you work with the U.S. president. You work with uh, President Obama. I, I work right? at the White House, you work. You work at the White House. Mm-hmm. And the president is known. His, his playlists go up. He has a wildly cool taste in music. Yes. How does he feel about Rush? I cannot imagine he even knows who they are. You haven't tried to convert him? Well, I, I don't have... <laughs> no, I don't think there's time for me to be sharing my playlist with the president. I don't. I do not think he has time on his calendar for that sort of foolishness. I could just see you. I could just see you having it on in your speakers. You know. I mean, yeah. I don't work in the Oval Office. I mean. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you. You know. I thought you were in there with him playing. Yeah. Rush no. While we, he was we don't have. Briefings. We don't have tandem desks or anything. Um, I mean, no. I, he 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 loves his R and B and his Stevie Wonder and Prince and all that amazing cool stuff that. You know, he he definitely has his own his own favorite uh, genres and scene. I think he'd like it if he gave it a chance. Yeah, definitely. I think he would. Uh, I mean, he's such good friends with Trudeau. You think that maybe he would send him a mixtape? Yeah, there's there's such a thing as a rush code. That was Jillian Marianovich, rush super fan, creative director of the Rush Con fan convention. It takes over Toronto's Chelsea Hotel this weekend, just in time for today's release of the new Rush documentary, Time Standstill. <laughs> 